Hi everyone, I'm Zhong Hun from UC Berkeley and the RISE Lab. This talk will present a new way of thinking about and producing data layouts for big data analytics. This is drawn work with collaborators from Microsoft Research and Microsoft. Consider this data set and a range partition layout. Let's say we have an analytics query that looks at all records with user equals root. Now, because the records required by this query are scattered around two blocks, this query is forced to read both. How can we do better? Well, instead of range partitioning, we can hash partition on the user column, resulting in an alternative layout. So in this case, the query can safely skip the second block. In practice, skipping is often efficiently implemented as a block level metadata check, such as the min max index in Parquet. However, one layout does not fit all. Here's another query that looks at CPU less than 10%. And we are back to the beginning where the query is required to read both. So we see that as workloads grow in complexity and diversity, heuristic layouts become increasingly suboptimal. In this work, we investigate the following problem. Given a table and a set of queries, how do we partition the data set into blocks? to maximize the total number of skipped records. Now, because we are working in big data analytics settings, this IO metric often correlates strongly with query performance. Our solution is called QD tree or query data routing tree. At a high level, it is simply a decision tree that recursively partitions the data space into smaller and smaller subspaces. The intermediate nodes are what we call cuts such as CPU less than 90 at the root here. And after a bunch of cuts and after some terminating condition is met, we form the leaves, which are the data blocks. Here's the key idea in this talk. We are gonna learn these QD trees with excellent skipping properties, and we are gonna use them to produce data layouts. So before we talk about how to learn or construct QD trees, what do we mean by using a QD tree to produce a layout? The fundamental operation to do so is routing data records. Say we have a record that looks like this. The first step is to arrive at the root and check against the root cut, CPU less than 90, and this will evaluate to either true or false, depending on which branch the record belongs to. So we route the record down the branch it belongs to until it reaches a leaf, at which point we will append it to that block. So the data set has a bunch of records. We can perform this routing on the entire data set in an embarrassingly parallel fashion. So in the end, we will arrive at a block level layout for the entire data set. Notice that we can serialize the data blocks in any format of your choosing, like Parquet or CSV. The second operation supported by QD3 is routing queries, and it is very similar to before. Now, the only difference in this case is that a query is a hyper rectangle. That's why it could potentially intersect with both branches. So in this case, we route the query down both branches until it is fully routed to the leaf level. So now we know exactly what the blocks require by this query, such as B1 and B3 in this example, and all other blocks can be safely skipped. So to summarize, the output of routing queries is a list of block IDs. Now we can take an original query and inject this list as an additional in filter so that any query engine can run this rewritten query and enjoy the benefits of QD tree layouts. Okay, so we have seen how to take a QD tree and output a block level layout. We have also seen how to obtain the list of block IDs to read for each query. We haven't talked about how to actually construct a QD tree. It turns out that finding the optimal QD tree for a given workload and dataset pair is an NP-hard combinatorial problem. Now, classically, uh, people use dynamic programming to solve combinatorial problems, but unfortunately, it is ineffective for large such spaces, such as the case in our problem here. We have also explored a greedy construction scheme. The details can be found in our paper. The remaining of the talk will be about our deep reinforcement learning approach to construct QD trees. And it can be seen as an approximate dynamic programming scheme. So at the core of the learning pipeline is an RL agent 
that learns to build trees by trial and error. It repeats this process of building a tree, evaluates its quality, and updates its internal model. And through this trial and error process and experience gathering, the agent is gonna learn what cuts are good and what cuts are bad. The agent takes as input a raw data sample as well as the query log. The purpose of the query log is that it provides a set of candidate cuts the agent can make. So after a fixed amount of training and or after a timeout is reached, the agent will output the best QD tree found so far. So now let's zoom in into the RL agent. The first step is to define what we mean by the RL problem and what the state space and action space are. In our case, the states are just the nodes, such as the blue dash rectangle here, and we are going to represent each node using a compact description of the subspace it corresponds to. For instance, in this case, CPU can range from zero to 90 and so forth. The actions in our problem are just the cuts to make on the nodes. And we take a very simple solution here where we include all filters found in the query log. So here's an example. Let's say we have two queries in the query log. We're just going to loop through the queries and figure out what are the pushdown filters and add it to the candidate cut set one by one. Okay, now we are ready to build our first tree. The first step is to de decide what to cut at the root level. So to do so, the RL agent uses a policy network, which is a function that takes a state and outputs a probability distribution over all the cuts. And we sample from this probability distribution and execute this cut. Now, notice that in the very beginning, because there's no information learned so far, the distribution will be close to uniform, but it will get improved over time after we gather a bunch of feedback. So we execute this sample cut, which results in two children, and we keep on scoring and sampling until we reach a terminating condition and we have a completed tree. So given the completed tree, we can compute the rewards, which are just defined to be the number of skip records under this layout. Importantly, there's no query execution required in computing the rewards because it's only query intersection checks. Now, we use an algorithm called PPO, which is a scalable RL algorithm to update the model. And it is also used by other RL successes, such as learning to play Dota from OpenAI. The details are not important, and the intuition of the update is simply to bump up the probabilities of good cuts. So the next time the agent has more incentive or is more likely to make those good cuts. And gradually the agent is going to learn to build better and better trees. Okay, does, th does this idea work? We evaluate on no denormalized TBCH. On the y-axis, we are going to show runtime in seconds and the x-axis is a query template. We compare to bottom up, which is a state of the art uh, layout scheme in the literature, and it is based on frequent filter mining. So different from us, they don't consider all filters, they only consider the frequent ones in the query log. Here are the results. We see that QD tree layout is able to significantly outperform bottom up, and this is because it skips 45% more records. And it enables an overall speed up of 1.6 times. We also evaluate on two real workloads from the internet company. In this case, we see an even bigger speed up from five times to 14 times. The reason is because these workloads have lower selectivities than the TPCH workload. And QD3 is able to quickly capitalize and identify the low selectivity cuts. Here, we investigate the learning efficiency. On the y-axis, I'm going to show the scan ratio of intermediate trees, so lower is better. On the x-axis is the elapsed time. So here are the learning curves for two workloads. The takeaway is that most improvements can be learned in the first 10 minutes. And if there's more time budget, better and better trees can be found up to convergence. What's surprising here is that even in the beginning of learning, the first few trees are already much better than the baselines. The reason is because our search space consists of cuts selected from the query workload 
and these cuts contain fine grained and informative literals. So by com combining these literals and cuts, we can be much better than coarse grained solutions such as range and hash partitioning. Finally, we show that QD trees are interpretable. Here I'm going to visualize a best tree found for the TPCH workflow. On the x-axis, I'm going to show the tree level. On the y-axis, I'm going to show the number of cuts per column. So here's the visualization. We see that this is a very sophisticated layout learned by the QD tree. Many columns are cut, and many of them are actually cut a lot of times throughout the whole tree. Let's zoom in into the first three levels. At the root, the agent decides to single out large containers. Second level, the agent chooses a so-called advanced cut, which is a binary selection. And this is something not expressible in classical coarse grain solutions. Moving on to the third level, we start seeing some date and uh, categorical columns. The moral of this exercise is to showcase the strength of our approach. We use reinforcement learning to search for useful data structures. And because the output is just a data structure, we can go ahead and transparently inspect it and deploy it as a white box. To summarize, I have presented QD trees, which are learned data layouts for big data analytics. We have shown how to use deep reinforcement learning to minimize the IO cost of the layouts. QD trees have the following properties. They can run on any formats, any engines, and they are highly interpretable. For more details in our paper, please check out these links. I look forward to conversations during the conference. Thank you.